Hello, good day and welcome back. So, today we're going to continue in the second part of our memory store file-like data um, object, okay? Um, data type. Um, and so, let's just sort of go back a little bit and remind ourselves what we were doing. So, we started with this thing that looks like a file. Support this operation. You can get the size. Um, it's empty. Um, and you can write it, read from it, and of course it implements also FMT string or um, thing. But we saw that though there was a problem with the read operation. We can write multiple um, bytes, slices of bytes to it, and it keep appending it and growing. But then when we read, it keep reading back from the same location. So we're gonna fix this in this version, fix our read operation. And then we're gonna see once we fix read, we might wanna be able to add something like close. Just so if you get to the end of reading a file, usually you wanna close it. Or something you might say, you know what? Before I even get to the end or when I get to the end, I wanna reread the data, so I might do a reset so I can start over. So let's sort of jump in and just um, look at that. So as usual, we're gonna just start over start from where we left off so we're going to do that and create it as section 8 and then we're going to go into section 8 directory and i'm going to start up my code editor so one of the, one of the things i want to show though is i'm going to do find and i'm going to look for anything um, in my class path um, that have um, uh, so there's anything there all right so i was gonna i was looking to see if there was any um previous um package that i had deployed so i just want to make sure that though i'm not cheating you in any way so i'm just verifying that all right so um again we're starting with this idea of having multiple directories and so here's our cli program and if you remember we have a byte here and let's just add another byte and we have this mem store and we're gonna write this buffer and um when we try to read it back, but let's write uh, multiple buffers. And so, um, you know what? Um, let's do this. We're gonna do um, one, two, three, and then we'll have another buffer. Uh, we'll call write buffer one and zero, and then write buffer, um, let's do write buffer one, okay? And so we're gonna do seven, eight, nine, and 10 okay good enough and then let's write this twice and just make sure that oh we're actually seeing the numbers 1 through 10 in our um, storage there okay and then of course um, yeah we make a buffer here to read them back and then um, we and let's make this a little bit smaller so we make this buffer um, 3 for example and we're gonna read from it and we're gonna print out our buffer and we're gonna print out what we read from it. So let's do that. So let's do um, CD into our client um, directory, CLI directory. We're gonna do go run main. And so as you can see, um, we've written what look like 10 things into our buffer. Um, here was, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what happened? Um, it looked like if um, we have, um, you know, while we have 10, which is what we intend, it is not the values that we expected because when it went back and wrote 7, 8, 9, it overwrote it here. And so now we don't have one bug, but we have two bugs, right? So we have to address that. And then in terms of reading, well, when we said read three bytes, it did read the first three bytes from our buffer here and if we were to try and read another byte another set of data so we're gonna do um, oh, what am i doing i don't want to do that um because i'm and d d and then if i call it read buffer come on i have a problem here with my thing so read buffer zero and i make another one and i call it read buffer one and so I try to read again. And now um, I'm going to, let's do this. After we finish writing, we print out our buffer and then we try and read. And so we print out where we read. We see the exact same problem. So if I rerun this, 
I can see that how just like before with the writing, I read back from the beginning. That's certainly not operating like a file. With a file, we'd expect that um, if we start reading from the beginning, as we do more and more reads, it sort of moves down and advance in the file. Similarly, as we write from the beginning of the file, as we write more and more data, it doesn't overwrite the previous data, but keep appending. So that's what we expect. So let's go here and then see what happened. So um, let's fix the uh, read for us or write. It doesn't really matter which one. We have to fix both. So let's go with write since that's the first operation. And so it looks like here what we're doing is we come in and we're growing our buffer. And so that's hence why this buffer here was 10, but we didn't use the extra space. We expected to put um, things at the end of it. And that is what should have happened. We should have um, come and copy to temp um, after we copied, uh, oh, where is our n? So, hmm, there's a bug. So we have n here. Um, where is n defined? Oh, n came in here, and so that's zero. So I have n the wrong place. So this should be n is equals to this, and then um, I can say off right into temp at this offset n. Um, I don't need to. Uh, save that value because now I know, well, how much did I write into the bucket buffer? I wrote into it, how much is um, P? So yep, yeah, so um, I'm gonna reuse N again. So the first N, when I set change N the first time, so N is zero, when I change it, that's how many, I, how many bytes I copied into this buffer. And so the second time is just how many I copied from P. So, so that's okay, I, I sort of overwrite the value. But anyway, and then I return n. So this should work. So let's just run this and make sure it's how this work. And so what I wanna see, um, that my, that my stuff save uh, my code. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, it looked like it saved it. Um, so that still is not giving me what I expect. I, I, I still get an incorrect result here. So let me think through this. Um, so we come in and we certainly grew our buffer, so that's correct. And then we copied into temp from the beginning of our buffer that we already have, and that gives us a number n. And then we slice temp, which is where we're gonna be copying to, from there, and then we copy p from p, which is what's passed in. So that should be correct. Now, oh, there's a one thing. If we look here, we can see that oh, this is using the package from seven. Well, we're in chapter eight now, so we wanna be able to make sure that we get the latest and the one that we intend. So this is, should be the MS from mem store from pack, um, chapter section eight. So let's rerun this again and make sure we're pulling in the right one. Oh, and there you go. So I was worried there why this wasn't working. So now this is correct. But our read is still incorrect. So let's go figure out our read. So for read, what we want is somehow keep track of some um, the offset where we have already read some data. So that tells us that oh, we have to keep track. We need to be modifying this data structure. And so we need a pointer to it. And so what is that thing going to be where we keep in track with for reading? Well, let's just call it a read offset, right? Read offset and it's an int. And so in our read function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read or copy into P from offset of R that read offset, right? Makes sense? And so we're gonna slice from there to the end. And of course we know that copy is safe. It's only gonna copy as much that could fit into P and therefore N would have that value. But whatever it is that we're able to copy, we need to update our read offset by that amount, advance it by that amount. So if we do that, we will be advancing you know, our read offset by n. And so let's see if that works for us now. So if we rerun this code, what we should expect using a buffer of three um, and reading twice, we should be able to see one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So let's see if that's what we see. And there we go. So that tells us that oh, we're now reading correctly and we've fixed that issue. And we, we don't have to use the same size buffer. This could be a buffer of 
30 if we want. And again, we can try this. Yeah. And it's much more data than is in there. And we should only be able to read back the maximum amount of data, which is seven. So the first one is going to read the first three bytes. And then the last one is going to read the last seven bytes, even though it's a buffer of 730, because we don't have any more data than that. And so that's exactly what it did. It reads the remaining seven, but that buffer is already allocated to be 30. So we have some free bytes in there. So this is working fine. But here's the thing. Let's do this. Let's um, save the value. So let's, um, instead of using, um, I'm going to use a, a loop. Um, let's say I'll make this four. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to read in a loop. I'm going to say n and error. OK, is equals to you. And then what I want to do is I want to say var n is an int. And var err is a value from the error interface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to wrap these guys in a if oh, for loop, right? And what I can do is I can essentially say um, if actually I don't need to even create the variable before, so I can do that uh, for sorry a for loop and say for that while error is not equals to nil, right? What I want to do, I want to keep reading, right? Um, so, um, so we're going to go back in and we're going to keep reading n and err equals. OK, so now I could also make this something like this. I can say define this as 0, comma, nil like that and then so while there is not nil then um, go in read and print out r and i could print out what r zero is and then i could print out what we got so i can say for example um, print n print the error and then print the buffer okay and so if we sit in a loop and do this, so let me make sure. OK. <laughs> so let me just keep it outside here. Ah, why is that complaining? Anyway, let me keep it outside here. var err is from error interface. And then I'll just say. Okay. All right. So let's loop around. Okay. And run this. And come on. Um, it's not equals to nil. So error. So error is equals to nil. Okay. So that's nil now. Um, so if it's not equal. If it's equals to nil, sorry. If it's equals to nil, there's no error, then we should keep looping around. Ah. So notice what's going on. Um, we read zero byte. Okay, well, I have to keep stop this now because it's going to keep going. But I could pipe it to less, for example, and I could quit that. And we can see that my buffer was four. I read four bytes from one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight. Then I read seven and nine. So those were the only two bytes in there, but then I had left over, right, from before. So that was correct. After then, I couldn't read anything because there's nothing in there because of that offset that I talk about, right? But look at our error. Our error is nil. So we really need to um, somehow re return when we n an error when we no longer have any more data. So we can do that after we finish reading, for example, some data, we can check and say, if r that um, read offset, if our read offset is equals to the length of how much data we have in our buffer, you know, 
if the two of them are the same, it means we're at the end of the buffer, okay? And so even if we're gonna return n, which is how much we managed to put in there, because we might be one byte off from the offset, able to copy in that one byte to n, to, um, to p, but then now we're at the n. So we can make a decision. We could return n to say, hey, you know, I'm giving you one byte, but there's no more. So we can return, you know, errors that new, and then say, you know, end of file or something like that, right? EOF. Um, we're gonna learn a little bit more about returning handling errors and some caveat. And so at that point, um, you see we have some other ways of returning. We have some other values we can return, and we have other ways of dealing with this error condition. We could deal with before or after. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't matter, but it's more important what you do with the error result. All right, so now if we run this, as you can see, um, it doesn't go on and off, on and on, because here it tells me at all, oh, I have four here, and then here it has two, but then it says, I give you two, but that's the end of the file. Now we could have chosen to respond, reply, since we had more than um, two, we could have chosen to respond with nil, and then put this test up here instead. And that way, look at how the error changes. So we can do, when we run the code now, I could get rid of this because it doesn't go on and on. And now you see four, four, nil, nil, two, and then zero EOF. Notice the difference between the two. So um, both are valid. It's just gonna be a matter of, so you can choose how you wanna implement this, and we're gonna talk more about this when we talk about the caveat. And it's there in the documentation for the reader interface. You can decide how you wanna implement these two. It's you, the reader, who really have to be careful of um, these two, two possible ways of reading data. Uh, when the error, like something like end of file, would be returned, right? So, all right, we'll get, like I said, we're gonna get back to that um, in, you know, in, um, another video where we talk about errors. So now we at least it look like if we're dealing correctly with um, thing. But one of the things I said we should we should do is add like a reset or and a close. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go back here and since reset and close are really really small functions, I'll probably add them here. Huh? Uh, let's just add them. Let's go get funky with adding individual files. We're not afraid of files, right? So reset that go and then package ms and then func and then we want to do a receiver and then we want to modify the um a field so this is going to be a reset one and um basically this just tell us that if we can reset now for now um we're going to say we don't need to return an error because if you just say reset we're going to reset it later on we're going to change it so that we return an error if the files are actually since we have closed we should really return error when um if um, if error, we should return an error if the file is already closed. I was about to say we shouldn't do it because we don't have a way to signal close, but since we're gonna implement close also, let's do that. So the other one we want is close that go. And so that's package, and we're gonna do FUNC, receiver star mem, and then we're gonna do close, and this, are we gonna return an error here? If it's already closed and we say close, no problem. So um, not a problem to cl close it multiple times. Um, so we're gonna do close. But what we really want is to write something like are that close um, or is closed or something like that equals to true, right? And so even if it's already closed, that's fine. Um, there could be some potential issue if multiple threads are trying to use this object, you know, like one is writing into it and another one possibly close it, but that's something else. That's not, we're not gonna deal with that here. And so let's add this Boolean to our struct here. And so we're gonna say bool. And so by default, this is gonna be false. So if it's not closed, and then you can ask it to be closed by doing calling the close method. What about reset? Well, for reset, um, if you're resetting it, well, 
what you want to do is r that read offset is equals to zero you want to reset that and if the file is closed well we don't want you to we want you to know how it wasn't reset so it's going to be false information if you say reset on something that's closed and thinking that it's reset we really shouldn't be resetting something that's already closed for any kind of operation and so um if is r that is closed r that is closed is true then we should return you know the errors that nil um invalid operation for state, all right? Um, so this is invalid operation resetting for this current state of this object, okay? And all this is telling me is that I should um, do some documentation since it's public. All right, so that's good. And what I'm trying to do here now is um, return nil if everything is okay. All right, so there is close and so that's fine. Um, now, one other thing, if we have the idea of something being closed, um, reset is going to read and write is going to work fine. So long as you call reset, you know, before you call read or write, but what, and so our stringer here should tell you if this thing is closed. So why don't we, um, change this a little bit to the say S colon equals, and then at the end we do a return S. And so maybe we include here. Um, the status and percent V and we include after R so we do R R that is closed right and so um, we do closed and so if this tell you if it's true or false if it's closed but now our read and write method must respect this. So first thing we do is if R that is closed, right? Um, we shouldn't be able to write to it. So we're gonna return zero because we didn't do anything. And we say invalid state for operation or something like that. So errors that new, and then we say invalid, yeah operation for state I mean you can do much nicer um, better um, messages than this and so um, so I'm gonna copy this one just so I'm gonna reuse the same thing for read and I'm gonna put this right front and center here and so the first thing we're gonna check and make sure that this file like object is not closed before we think now as you can see since we have you can close it we might choose to do like a open first that you you have to create this thing and then say open and then before you can perform any operation on it and you might want to do that um the open operation might take a parameter in which you specify how many bytes you're able to put in this thing before it's full and then you can have things like is it full and um, you know, you can't write after a certain time. So you can definitely go much further with this. But for now, we're going to treat this like a file that can grow. And so we, and we don't, and since it's in memory, we don't have to say open. Open for a file makes sense because we could specify a file name that we want to open. But here we don't have a file name. So I think this is about it. Now, we don't have um, some tests for this. But one of the things we can do is we know that this works um, or multiple read works. So what we can do is after we read and get to the end is we can test m that reset to make sure that oh we can read again and then we can do um, try doing this which is we're gonna try and read some bytes which we don't care how many by to read okay let's say we do care we're gonna print it out and then we're gonna close m that close and then we're gonna try doing a read again and print out how many bytes we read. and what we should expect is that after this we're able to reread from the beginning then when we say close and we try to go read it should fail and also we know how write is written pretty much just to do the same test so that should work also and so this is what we get, right? Um, 
we reach the end of it, we reset, we can start over, start reading it from the beginning, and then we fail to read um, anything. Now our state there is not, oh, invalid state, and then why is that one for? Oh, because I tried to print out um, what I read before. So this really should be, um, you know, if, uh, if error equals to nil, you know, if error not equals to nil, if error equals to nil, then print that else, you know, print um, the error alone. Actually, um, you know, cut on this type in. So I'm gonna put this at the end, and then I'm gonna say, yep, there we go. If error, then I'm not gonna print out this. If not nil, so which means there's some sort of error, and then I'm just gonna return in my program right here, and so I'm not gonna continue to the end, and there we go. So I run this, and exact, that's exactly what we see. So I hope this um, was a nice example, or this ought to be a nice example to sort of illustrate how you can sort of pull things together slowly, and like these very small interfaces in Go, they are actually well thought out and well designed. Um, so we're gonna see a little bit more we're playing with this interface and some other um, functions that they provide. So stick with me. I'm going through this very slowly. Again, this is for people who are either new to Go or new to programming. If you're very experienced in some other language, this might seem way too like snail space to you. But you know, hey, um, this is really targeted to people who are new to the language and new to also programming also. All right, take care and see you in the next video. Thanks for clicking the um, thumbs up button. Um, more of you please do that please do that and um, please help me spread the word all right take care bye have a great day